Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I am back to drawing with my dominant hand, and I gotta say, it feels pretty good. There's nothing like a little adversity to make us appreciate how much we take for granted. Uh, having my right hand back, it just feels so good, so good to be able to create the way I want to. Uh, so I am definitely gonna take advantage of this so let's get into this drawing. So I'm drawing a steampunk girl. This was kind of a funny little, uh, I was going through my comments and I noticed somebody gave me a super thanks, which at first I was like, what the heck is a super thanks? And it was $10. And so apparently some YouTube channels, including mine, were given this new toggle switch, which allows people to just donate to the channel, which is pretty cool. Um, I haven't had anybody donate yet and Atomic Yang decided to donate so I said well let's uh, let's celebrate I guess because it's pretty cool of him to do that so I asked him what he wanted me to draw and he said a steampunk girl would be cool to see. So steampunk girl it is and I thought this would be a cool way to kind of kick off a new direction in my channel and to be clear about my channel I'm not um, like some of the other channels where these guys are already established professionals. They've kind of, they've got their niche, they've got their style, they're locked in. Uh, with my channel, you're kind of still, I'm still on this journey, the same journey you guys are all on. And that is to improve, to become a better artist and kind of just see where my art takes me. I have a career in design, but illustration and drawing, drawing specifically has always been my passion. I just love to create. So that leads me to the current direction I plan on going. And if you followed my channel for a while, a few years ago, I dedicated an entire year to nothing but digital art. And all that digital art I did, I created on an iPad Pro using Procreate, which was super fun. I absolutely love the iPad Pro. I love to draw in Procreate. And I definitely feel like if you do want a career in illustration, you have to use digital art or you re I mean you're gonna be really behind the curve if you don't uh, there's just so much power there uh, to please clients to create the the artwork you really want to create down to the finest pixel uh, so for me digital art is I love it I actually really like digital art and I really like traditional drawing um, and unlike last time I do plan on integrating both. I'm not committing just to digital art. I still want to do my pencil drawings because that's what I love to do as well. Um, but I also love the freedom of creating digitally. I love how I can completely change drawings even after I've finished them. So going forward, my plan is to do a drawing like this. Same sketchbook tours I've always done. I know you guys really like those and I love doing those and I love just the freedom I have to kind of just draw whatever I want. Um, and so what I plan on doing is doing a drawing like this. And then the very next video or the very next drawing will be a digital version of this concept. It won't be the same exact drawing. Sometimes it might be, I don't know, we'll see. But I'm gonna do a steampunk girl digitally. So every time I upload a video, um, or at least every other pretty consistently, I plan on doing a traditional drawing and then redoing it digitally just to see the difference, just to work on my skills and just to progress as an artist. So I'll be experimenting with both digital and traditional art. I plan on doing some pencil on white paper. Obviously the tone tan paper is always something I love to work on. I just, that's something I'll never leave behind at all. Um, I just really enjoy it. Uh, and then the other uh, part of this is going to be the digital journey that I'm on, kind of exploring uh, different tablets, different ways to, I mean, I'm super familiar with the Adobe products. So Photoshop, um, I know everything there is to know about Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, all those because I'm a designer. So I'm looking at actually right now getting um, a tablet or maybe even a couple of tablets, just uh, display tablets um, to work Photoshop and things like that because I love the iPad Pro and I love Procreate So I just want something to compare it to just to see what my options are out there So you guys will kind of be in the know on that 
as well as I kind of experiment. I'll let you know what I find out. I wanna try some cheaper tablets and just some different workflow options for me just to see what works best for me. And who knows, maybe I already found it because iPad Pro, Procreate's pretty dang awesome. But I think it'll be pretty fun. Um, and I also think, you know, having a concept already down on paper like this one, where you have this steampunk girl, this weird kind of robot guy, kind of interesting design. Uh, and then I'm going to take this concept and really just fine tune it in a, on a digital landscape. So now that I've told you guys what I plan on doing, let's talk about what I'm doing right now. Uh, so this drawing is done on Strathmore tone tan paper. I love working on tone tan paper, as many of you know. And it's all done with big pens and markers, so no pencil. So with this, basically, I had an idea. Um, thanks to Atomic Yang, he said, draw a steampunk girl. So I sit down in front of my drawing tab or my sketchbook and just start drawing, right? I kind of have an idea. I want to pose. Um, sometimes as I draw stuff in, as I drew her in, I thought, hey, it'd be kind of cool to have like a big robot guy behind her. So I'll just start adding it in. I always start out with like a pink or red big pen, and these are just standard everyday big pens. Uh, I kind of do just my sketch with the red, and then right here I'm going over it with a dark purple uh, to make my lines a little bit darker, uh, to flush things out, but I'll add details with the purple that aren't necessarily there when I add them with the red. The red is just kind of structure lines and things like that to go off of. Although my structure lines are a little bit more detailed than most people's. This drawing actually ended up taking me a little bit longer than normal. So two and a half hours is what I think I had into this one, pretty close to that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think there was a time period in this where it took me a little bit longer than I had wanted because I wasn't getting the robot guy exactly the way I wanted. I mean, if, so like I said, I kind of do my sketches with the big pen, but it's not truly sketches because I didn't do multiple poses or anything like that, which you should, Every I should. I, I never do the sketches I should do, but in my sketchbook, sometimes I just want to sit down and draw and I skip the very important <laughs> uh, process of figuring out poses and things like that. So this is kind of, I see it in my head and then I just go for it kind of thing, which is definitely, I would say, counterproductive to having really good looking art at the end. Uh, it's, I'm just, I think it's cause I'm lazy. So yeah, I, I wish I wasn't that way, but sometimes I'm just too eager to get started. Um, maybe I'll fix that someday. Maybe I'll really get in the habit of doing better thumbnails and things like that. But you know, it is a sketchbook. So, but, uh, so right here, and you've already seen me add some of the markers. Uh, I have a bunch of different markers that I use. I have all kinds. I've done some marker tutorial or, uh, reviews. So if you can go back and check those out, but I think most of the markers I'm using here are Ohuhu, which they're pretty good markers. They work great for a sketchbook. Um, but I kind of bounce back and forth between the markers and the big pins, which actually I think sticking with the um, markers first is a better way to go. Uh, normally I add in all my shadows. You kind of saw me do that earlier. And then I'll go in the, the, over the top with colors. Now this is definitely important if you're working with uh, like a brush pen, ink brush pen, because uh, you'll see some of my drawings where I do that, I'll use an ink brush pen but I wait till the very end to use that because sometimes the markers will cause that to bleed. So it's just better to have them all, all your colors established and then go over the top with brush pen and fill in all your details. So the, since this was steampunk, I tried to keep all the colors pretty toned down except for like a few pops of red. Uh, you know, I wanted it browns and golds and that kind of, that's the kind of color aesthetic that steampunk has to it. Um, as far as actually capturing, like or making this really look like a steampunk, I did with like, I kind of went with the, uh, uh, what would you call them? Just like what's expected, like the, the arm with a lot of watches, like basically the <laughs> Halloween costume store version of steampunk. Um, and that's, that's one reason like go, like this is a sketchbook, I put down my ideas, but the thing about digital art and why I'm excited to do this drawing um, in a digital format 
is I tend to research more. I tend to like go back and look online and then really fine tune like some of those ideas I might have for steampunk, like better gears, better things like that. I can just add more detail and just flush things out a bit more. Um, now I could with traditional art, uh, I could have done that with this one, but like I said, this is my sketchbook. This isn't like some 10 hour finished piece of artwork that I'm going to be hanging on somebody's wall or anything like that. So I don't really put in that kind of time on something like this. So now I'm going to do something I normally don't do. And that's actually try and pick out some things I like about this drawing. Uh, for me, I know I can be a very negative uh, person sometimes when it comes to my own art. It's really hard for me not to see the flaws, uh, especially right after I finish a drawing. Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to try and do my best to, you know, talk about some positive things for a change. Uh, so things I like, I like her face. I feel like her expression is pretty cool. Um, she's looking down on you. Like she might be kind of like a boss character, which was what I intended. Um, and then maybe the guy, the robot behind her is like a henchman. Uh, he might be fully robotic. He might be, you know, one mistake I made um, is I made his face, his skull, like his jaw and stuff gray. And I wish I had kept it white. I liked it a lot better when it was white. Uh, it just made him look like might have had a skull underneath there. And so maybe a human brain inside. But the way he is now, he definitely looks like all robotic. Uh, but I liked their dynamic together. I wanted something where, you know, it was, it leads itself to kind of a story like you could see these two running like a bad part of town like a mob boss kind of person something like that gangster and that's what I was going for right here you're uh, seeing me add the highlights to this drawing which is probably my favorite part of any drawing is going in and adding the highlights it's just so satisfying and sometimes I get too carried away with the highlights but the cool thing about markers and the tone tan paper is I can add in all the highlights I want, where the light is and stuff like that. But then I'll go back through with my markers. And so like parts of him or leather or cloth, I'll just go over those highlights with the same colored marker and it dulls them down a bunch, makes them not look so shiny and makes them look more just like light hitting the surface of, you know, a duller product or a duller material. Um, which for me works out pretty good. So I'm noticing this fly in this part of the video. You guys seeing that? You saw him? I killed that fly. I've got this gun that shoots salt and I brought it upstairs because this fly was driving me nuts for like two, three days. And he had a buddy. I thought it was one fly, but it was two. And I got them both. So that was pretty awesome. I felt a lot of satisfaction in ending their lives. So that's pretty much the drawing. Um, all in all, it was an okay drawing. Uh, like I said, there was definitely some things I liked about it uh, and some things I definitely didn't. Um, but it's my first drawing back, you know, using my right hand again. Uh, it's Like I said, it was rough for a couple of months there, uh, drawing left-handed and just not having the full control that I'm used to. Um, but like I said, it's always nice to have things like that that happen sometimes just so we realize how much we take for granted. Um, taking my art for granted is something that it's happened to me a few times in my life where I didn't draw for a while. Um, and especially when I was younger and you realize, man, like well, one, you realize how much you miss it uh, and how much a part of you it is. Uh, so it reinvigorates you as far as creating and stuff goes. But um, anyway, that's pretty much the video, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope you stick around to follow me on this journey of just becoming a better artist. And I hope you guys become better artists as well. And maybe you're inspired by the stuff I create. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And I will catch you later.